Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I am proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So, Brooke Shields has, I guess, just released some kind of documentary now that's playing at the Sundance Film Festival. Uh, it's called Pretty Baby, where she's, like, really telling her, like, life story. And so, the Michael Jackson story has come up, and she has just 100% completely shut down any, like, even attempt at saying that she dated Michael Jackson, that her their relationship was purely... Uh, just friendship type of relationship and they just would like play like kids and just enjoy each other's company like that type of relationship they were just friends N never had anything whatsoever to do being like sexual and she was even saying it's like when they would go on a, a dates and stuff that she said that it was even go as far as where Michael would tip off the paparazzi to be at the location where they were going to arrive and have like dinner or whatever and so that they could be photographed together and stuff. And so, like, that's what shows you is, like, how much of a... And so that's the kind of thing. It's, like, that's, like, tabloid journalism stuff, like, that Michael is creating the tabloid journalism to feed to the fans and stuff, right? So that goes to prove you. When Michael tells you, when Michael then invokes saying, don't listen to the tabloids, that's all junk. So you can't believe that. When Michael is saying that, then that's a lie. So you have to get to the understanding of what are the real facts and stuff and what are the real truths of what's taking place here so let me go ahead and uh i'll just read some of this uh documentary stuff like i said i'm not good at uh i'm not a good editor and stuff right so i have to do this like the real generic way and stuff so i'll just put it on here and uh so you won't be able to see it all let me see if i can get it on there okay so hopefully it'll show up on the screen better and i'll just go ahead and just read it and stuff right so it says in the new documentary, Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, which premiered Friday at the Sundance Film Festival, the model and actress opens up like never before about her storied life and career. Lionel Wilson's documentary provides a raw and honest look at one of the most famous, beautiful, controversial, and misunderstood women of her time, allowing Shields the space to unpack topics such as her beloved mother's struggles, her mother's struggles with alcoholism, uh, previously undisclosed sexual assault, and the controversial nude scene she performed on screen as a child. Sometimes Shields also provides insight into her infamous relationship with Michael Jackson, which, like many things in her life, has been misreported and misrepresented misrepresented. In the film, Shields maintains that despite Jackson's repeated claims to the contrary, that the two never dated or had a sexual relationship. Okay, let me go down and read some more of this stuff. But right there, okay, the two never dated or had a sexual relationship. I mean, let me zoom in so it's like, Two never dated or had a sexual relationship. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, she just flat out shut down any of those allegations and stuff, right? She 100% shut that down. And now she'll explain more about what was actually taking place. Shield met Jackson when she was 13 and the two became fast friends. They were both child stars shouldering an enormous amount of responsibility, but Shills says what connected them most was that even as teenagers and later adults, they were both very childlike. Despite her public image as a sex symbol, Shield says she wasn't in touch with her sexuality until much later in life. She and Jackson were both um, quite juvenile in some ways and mature in others, she explains. Her comments echo ones she made while eulogizing Jackson's. We had a bond, she said at his funeral. Both of us needed to be adults very early, but when we were together, we were like two little kids having fun. We hung out, Shield says, of their friendship, insisting to Wilson that there was nothing more to it. Still, she says Jackson was enamored with being seen with her. Shills describes times they would make plans to go out for dinner and the paparazzi would already be waiting, implying that Jackson would tip them off so they could be photographed together, right? Then it has this photograph here, right? That's what she's like, they're saying, you know, showing you a photo, saying this is what would happen. You can see there, like the jacket, if you look at there, Michael's got that red jacket on, like, from one of the award shows, you know, like the American Music Awards jacket on, whatever one that is and stuff. But he's like fully dressed. And this is like what I would show you like with the photographs with like Lisa Marie Presley. It's like, th this is like the same kind of thing. Michael 
kind of just like, okay, well, let's just act like it's a marriage now and stuff, right? It was just like this, this is what Michael did. This was the same type of thing and there was no real relationship. It was just like for the, for the, for the public and stuff, right? Now the people like Lisa Marie could have been uh, deluded into thinking that maybe she was actually going to have a real relationship with Michael, but that it never happened. They just remained friends and stuff, right? They never actually had, even with them being married and stuff, they never actually had a real relationship. Okay, so it says, as she's previously re revealed, she says Jackson even wanted to adopt, adopt a child with her. What it was was a young man who kept reaching to try and find happiness, she told Rolling Stone following his death. I think he wanted to take his resources and make a difference to other people in their lives. And he knew that I wanted to do that in the world too. She would reach out to someone, let me see, so, so he would reach out to someone like me and say, how can we make a difference? It's easier to adopt a child if you're two people. <laughs> if, you're two, if you're, that's what he, so right, he say like, to go to the, through the adoption process, even though he's Michael Jackson, it would be easier for him to adopt a child if he, if he was married, right? And when you go through the adoption process, he, so he said, even if you're two people, so that's kind of like the thing is like the Lisa Marie Presley, that's what he was kind of probably thinking is like, he was, he's trying to figure it out, you know, he's probably trying to figure out what, which way to go. He's trying to do this and trying to do that, but it, it, all of it works better if you're two people and stuff, right? And that's why he, that he has the fake marriage to the Debbie Rowe, you know, because I think that that relationship is that uh, Debbie Rowe got pregnant by the Dr. Klein and they were looking for a way to who to give the child to. And that's where Michael Jackson came into. I don't think that that child was created by Michael Jackson whatsoever. I think it was Debbie Rowe, Dr. Klein. Then they were looking for somebody to give the child to. I think then that's where Michael comes into play. But then after that, then Michael has the test tube baby, I think with Paris Jackson, which is, I think is Macaulay Culkin's the father of that. But that's like, it's like, so it was easier. He couldn't, he wasn't adopting the baby. His other options would have like a test tube baby, but it's easier when you're two people and you've got a mother, a woman willing to to participate in stuff right so it's uh, that's what that's what that word reminded me of what do you say that to her to her it's easier it says it's easier to adopt a child if you're two people <laughs> okay that, i i just like that line it's funny and shit okay so it's a it says he never said formally will you marry me or anything like that it's like it says he never said formally will you marry me it was never that for me he never was that definitive but i think he was a guy who kept searching for happiness Things came to a head in 1993 when Jackson told Oprah Winfrey that he and Shields were dating. Shields says she called him afterwards confused at the time she was dating Lewis and Clark star Dean Kane. After that, Shields says the two drifted apart. So that was like a thing that kind of ended their, their, their actual close friendship that they did have where they actually were really good friends. When Michael Jackson invoked Brooke Shields' name on that time on the Oprah, because of, she was actually in a real relationship at that time now, that like caused problems. That caused, that was drama as an issue. And that's Michael starting that, that's the t tabloid. That's the same thing of what I'm saying. That's that tabloid journalism stuff that Michael started that rumor. He's the one that did that to her, right? So that's what I'm saying. When people are trying to say, Michael would never lie, he's an angel. Well, what did he just do to her? He just did that to Brooke Shields. Did she really deserve that? And why did he have to do that? That's because Oprah asked him, are you a virgin? And he couldn't answer that. So he starts to be like, oh, well, I, when I date Brooke Shields, Brooke Shields, don't forget about Brooke Shields, good old Brooke Shields, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, it's, a, it's crazy dynamic to all the real story of what actually happened. And it says, in a 2001 conversation with Rabbi Shmuley Boteach, Jackson called Shields one of the loves of my life. See, because if my Michael is calling her when she has just flatly told you it was never that way whatsoever. And if Michael's referring to her as one of the loves of my life, that's the thing where all the fans are be like, no, well, he referred to her as one of the loves of my life. That means they are having sex. That means they could have gotten married. There could have been children. All this like fantasy land stuff, you know, all this like Cinderella story world. It's like Disney world stuff. They're living in their heads. It's crazy that that's and that's why I have to deal to like try and bring them back into reality. It's like, come on, you're like living in fantasy land. It's like you're watching like some Cinderella movie and stuff, right? It's like I'm trying to shake them. Come on, get back into reality and stuff, right? This world's not Cinderella movie and shit. And so uh, it says... 
uh, he referred to her as one of the loves of my life. He added, I think she loved me as much as I loved her, you know. Uh, he says, we dated a lot. We went out a lot. Her, her, her pictures were all over my wall, my mirror, everything. And it's like, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird, like the way for him to say that and stuff. He'd be like stalker, because we get this modern world. We're like he was a stalker. <laughs> He's a stalker to her shit, right? And it's it's just fun. it's funny. It's it's a funny story. But the big thing about it is that when Michael Jackson evokes having like real loves and dating and stuff, like one of the peoples that he's done that with is Brooke Shields, and she just has completely now hundred percent shut that down. Let me just see. It says, uh, for more on Shields, including, that's uh, later on Hulu. It says, you that movie Pretty Baby later on will be on Hulu later on this year and stuff, right? So, yeah, it's just, okay, so, I mean, that's it. The the rumor about their relationship, that's, it's clear, it's clarified. And it's been, this is the way I've been telling you that this is the way it is again. Because that's the thing, it's like, how many times do I got to be right before you people understand that I see the bigger picture and... Generally, most of the times when I'm making these assumptions and I'm telling you no, I'm telling you Michael's like a virgin, you know, that he definitely is not having anything with uh, Brooke Shields. There was nothing there. Even Lisa Marie, nothing there. Debbie Rowe, nothing there. There's nothing. And, and then you can see how he reverts back to the child. Even after going through all that with all those people. Then the next thing you know, there he is sitting with the freaking child and stuff. And it's like, and but that's and that's why it's a fair accusation to label him as the pedophile allegations. And I say, Michael's not a pedophile, but it's fair because he reverted back to that. It's fair to accuse him of that. That's a thing that the fans don't like. And it's like, no, we I live in the real world and stuff. And we're talking about what's fair, what accusations are fair. And at that point, when Michael did that, is it fair at that point to you start asking the questions hey actually are you a pedophile what is actually going on here and now the pedophile seems to be the answer but that's because nobody understands that Michael's actually not a Jackson that his real parents are Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson and then Michael was abandoned as a child and he thought he got to Motown with his family and he was doing everything with Joe and it was just a family but then when he finds out that Diana tells him the truth when he gets to Motown Diana tells him the truth no I'm your parent this is what actually happened then Michael realizes oh all that shit that was going on with Joe, instead of it being a normal process that had happened between your family, now it's like, oh, that's some weird shit. Why were you doing that to me? And I wasn't actually your kid. And why were you actually, now he, now he starts looking at shit differently, right? Everything gets cloudy and everything gets messed up. And that's how he develops into the Michael Jackson, the Peter Pan, living in the Neverland Ranch and shit, right? That's how all that shit develops because it wouldn't have developed that way if he was just a Jackson and shit, right? So his life developed in a weird way, but that's how then you get him being where he's hanging out with the kids and doing the stuff because of the development of his real life situation. But his real life situation is that he was abandoned as a child. That's what causes those traits to develop. It's not through sex his sexual desires that he's hanging on to the kids as being a pedophile and said he's damaged and shit that he had real world issues and stuff right and he protected us as being like the fans and stuff right because the show's not as enjoyable because everybody he's like an entertainer and it's like you got to perform and you got to entertain you got to make everybody happy and stuff right and he comes out and tells you i'm an orphan i'm not part of the jack seat it's like oh then the crowd goes oh and then it's not such a good happy story anymore right and then the kids don't be get to be like we're moonwalking and Michael's the greatest Gigabob and he's an angel and all that shit, right? Then the little kids don't get to be happy and you make the kids cry and shit. Michael doesn't want to make the kids cry and shit, right? So he's like, well, I'll just lie to him and it's for the better of everybody and shit, right? <laughs> and then we are where we're at now and shit, right? It's all, Michael's dead, you know? It's what had, Michael died. I found the truth. We're breaking the true story now, but this is the process of what's actually going to develop in Michael Jackson's life. It's the real thing. I don't know why people are hindering the natural process and development of the true story developing the way it should. We just got to get to the point now. The next step is Michael gets to be understood who he is. Mike, the Smokey and Diana are still alive. We get to hear their true explanation. You know, let's. It, it all needs to happen. It's like right now. Let's get this thing. It's all here. It's all ready to happen and stuff. Let's just make. Let's make it happen. Bring the truth out for everybody, so the whole world can heal and have an understanding about the realities of the actual world that we do live in.